Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. Happy to be back with you again. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate all of your contributions to the channel here as we continue to cover the bills. And look, we've got a friend with us with Western New York and Buffalo ties. Sean Stepner from Channel 2 WMAR in Baltimore, a former Buffalo reporter at Channel 7. Back with us, Sean. Thanks for being with us. Great to be with you, Mike. Good to see you. You know, we were talking before we came on the air. So you've been gone, I'm going to say, what's it been, like five, six years since you were reporting in Buffalo? Six years, yeah. I left in uh, August of 16, right before the 16 season. And it's funny, um, I was there for, you know, eight and a half years, loved my time in Buffalo, still follow uh, what's going on in the city, the Bills, the Sabres, everything, you know, um, on social media, interacting with so many people from from Buffalo still and still have, you know, lots of friends in the area. Um, you know, my family, you know, my my two kids were born in in, in Buffalo and Rochester. So. Um, so, yeah, I uh, I've been gone for six years and I said on my final broadcast on Channel 7 uh, way back when I said um, maybe, you know, I was there and the Sabres made the playoffs twice. They didn't win a series. And, the you know, we know what the Bills did between, um, you know, 07 and 16. I said, maybe I leave and the fortunes change. It's taken a little bit for the Sabres to change. The Bills, boom, I'm out. And it's just like so foreign to me seeing how much winning is going on with the Bills. But I'm so happy for all the fans in Rochester and in Buffalo and all over Western New York, all over the world, really. Um, really I, I, I cheer for the city and the fans, the city of Buffalo, city of Rochester, and the fans, the Bills, um, because not so much the team, but the fans and the cities, I still cheer for. Yeah, well, um, that's really. I, I'm sure people appreciate that because once it sort of gets in your blood, Western New York, and you see the passion of the fans, I think you, uh, you, it always stays with you. Um, and Absolutely. look at what we've got. Look at what we got coming up this week. Now you've got this Ravens team. I, I think they're a fascinating team to watch, and the two quarterbacks matchup. Let's just go right there. I mean, we talk about teams that rely on their quarterback. Their quarterbacks can do it all. I don't think there's a better matchup for that in terms of running and passing and doing whatever it takes than Josh Allen and Lamar. Tell us about what you've seen out of Lamar. I mean, we've seen the highlights, what you've seen out of Lamar so far this year. Well, let's start with the off season and, you know, he did not show up to OTAs. We all know about the contract, it, the contract situation. He's on the final year of his deal his rookie deal. And, um, you know, that that's really over the off season, the national narrative has been Lamar and the contract. I'll tell you being there day in and day out through the off season, the voluntary and the mandatory mini camp, um, you know, it, it really hasn't been a focus. And the reason being is because, you know, of course, we asked the questions. You have to ask the questions about Lamar and his contract situation and where the where the organization is regarding that. And let's remember, he doesn't have an agent. So no, nothing's getting leaked out, right, unless the organization wants it to. And they don't want it to. And Lamar's camp himself and his close-knit you know, family and, and, and advisors, um, they're not leaking anything out. So, you know, it hasn't been that much of an issue. And players say he has not changed a bit. He showed up to mandatory minicamp, didn't have to, but he did. Uh, I mean, mandatory. You have to. It's mandatory. But, you know, Lamar being Lamar, he, he could have sat that out too. He could have held out, but he didn't. He showed up and he put on weight. He put on muscle. You could tell by looking at him what kind of offseason he had and what he was focusing on. And I'll tell you, um, he looked great, specifically in the air. We all know what he can do running the ball, but he really, and he said this for a couple of years, um, he's wanted to improve his passing game and he's needed to, and he's put an emphasis on that. And we can tell through the first three games, I mean, what, 10 passing touchdowns and two running touchdowns. 
Um, you know, he is an improved passer and he's a better all around quarterback, which is scary in a contract year. Let's remember. Yes. He's a, is a, is a contract year. So he wants, he wants that bag as the kids say, Mike, he wants that bag of money. And if we look to this Sunday, you have to think these are the two leading candidates for most valuable player in the league right now, Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson. And looking at this game, maybe who does better in this game might end up being, depending on how things shake out, might end up being the league MVP when it's all said and done. Yeah, that's a good point because you know the way these things go. The narrative starts and then somebody's in the lead and it's just the way it plays out and you almost got to catch them and to see. Of course, you know, because the playoffs wouldn't matter for an MVP vote. Um, I'm fascinated when a guy bets on himself. I mean, we're seeing this in baseball with Aaron Judge and then he puts up 60 plus, you know, whatever he's going to end up doing. And you see it with Lamar. I get the feeling no matter what happens at the end of the year, at worst for the Ravens, they franchise him, right? I mean, what would they do? What are they doing if they don't keep Lamar? Like, I mean, I know there's the whole thing about can he extend a team into the playoffs and where would they be? But, I mean, it's hard to find a guy and whatever you think about his top, top end in the playoffs. Am I wrong thinking that the Ravens can't move on from him? No, no, they're not going to. And a couple things. One – This franchise has already seen a quarterback bet on himself. His name was Joe Flacco. And when Joe Flacco bet on himself, all they did was win a Super Bowl. Um, And and he had one of the best all-time postseasons for a quarterback. I mean, he basically transformed himself in in the playoffs and led them to the Super Bowl. He was the Super Bowl MVP as well. So they've already gone through that. As far as Lamar, look – I'm of the belief that if two things are different in this circumstance, he signed, he, he, he signed long-term just like Josh Allen is in Buffalo. One, if he has an agent, I think he signed Two, if Deshaun Watson never got that guaranteed money, Lamar is signed. Um, So yeah, I mean, um, you know, that being said, yeah. I mean, when you, move forward a couple of years, they can franchise them next year. They can franchise them the year after. I mean, that that's, but look, to be honest, if they franchise them two years in a row, I mean, he's gone, but, but they have time, right? I mean, they have the luxury of time. They have this year, they have next year and the year after they have three more years of Lamar. So that's what they're working with. But, you know, if you're talking contract and he has said that, you know, starting week one, no more negotiating. He doesn't want to negotiate during the season. But, you know, I always kind of call players and organizations bluff when they say I've always have. If the right deal comes along during the bye week or this week, if the right deal comes along and it's all guaranteed like Lamar wants, boom, he's signing that, right? So I don't know about that. Most likely they're not negotiating until next offseason. And, and that's that's when – things are going to get real. That's when I think um, it, it's of great import for the Ravens to get them locked up because, yeah, you don't want to move on from a franchise quarterback. And and going back a few minutes to, to what we were talking about when I first signed on, when we first started this, I was covering the Bills when they were trying to find Josh Allen, right? And it took – they wandered through the quarterback desert for so many years – And they finally got their guy. The Ravens were fortunate enough to gamble on Lamar with the final pick of the draft, the first round in 2018. They got him. Joe Flacco gets hurt that following year. He comes in and they find their guy. They were fortunate enough to not have a bridge guy. They go from Flacco to Lamar. That doesn't happen, you know, often as, as we all know in Western New York. Yeah. Uh, how about him on the field? You talked about what he's done. You know, everybody looks to weapons, and obviously he's the number one weapon. I mean, much like Allen is. Now he's got Stephon Diggs, University of Maryland guy, as his number one wide receiver, and he's got other really good players. Um, I, when I look at the Ravens, I mean, I, I think everybody does. Who's his help? It starts with Andrews. Obviously he gets the most targets. Um, 
how good has he been? Because I saw the contested catch in the end zone. I, I would think every coordinator comes in and goes, all right, Lamar, and then we got to try to take Andrews away. And nobody really seems to take him away. No, they don't. Um, you know, through Lamar's first four years, that has been his guy, um, you know, s- since Mark Andrews came into the league. Um, yeah, he, he he's the number one option. He's right up there with the, the best tight ends in the National Football League. But the key this year is, you mentioned it, weapons. They have wide receivers that they bet on. They traded Marquise Brown over the offseason because Marquise Brown wanted out. And, you know, he, he, he wasn't really panning out as the first round wide receiver that they drafted him as. Um, they traded him and everybody's thinking they traded him at the draft. Everybody's thinking they're going to get a veteran wide receiver. They're going to bring in another number one um, that maybe they'll draft another number one receiver. That didn't happen. They were betting on Rashad Bateman, who played 12 games last year, who came in as their number one guy, and Devin Duvernay. And then they picked up Demarcus Robinson, you know, in training camp. Those are their guys. I mean, does that scream weapons to you? It doesn't to me. However, um, Andrews is there. He was the number one target. But through the first three games, you've seen Devin Duvernay, Rashad, uh, DeMarcus has a touchdown, but Duvernay and Rashad Bateman have really stepped up. Um, they, they're, they're emerging as uh, potential uh, weapons for Lamar. And that's really what's going to help Mark Andrews, to your point, get even better. Because now you have to worry about those other guys. And, and Lamar Jackson really hasn't had that since he's been in the league. Yeah, Duvernay, did I read it right? Eight targets, eight catches, like every time they've gone to him, unless I looked Very at the reliable. stats wrong. Yeah, Very and three yeah. touchdowns already, and he's got speed. So And he's a returner, and he ki- yeah. returns kicks and punts. And he already has a kickoff return this year to open the Miami game. That, that's how it started. We all know how it ended. Uh, so um, DuVernay is, is a big threat. Yeah, you mentioned the Miami game. Okay. We just got back from Miami where the Bills lost that game. That's our only loss. Ravens' only loss is to Miami. It's just between us here, so no Dolphins fans are listening. Of course. I don't think they're that good of a team. I know they're undefeated, and they beat the Bills, and they beat the Ravens. But both of those teams got done that game going, we're the better team, and we didn't win. Maybe there was health reasons more for the Bills and the Heat, and the Ravens, it just fell apart for them in the fourth quarter. But am I missing something there? It, for all Bills fans, if you can go back and watch the fourth quarter of the Ravens Dolphins game, and you will be smiling from ear to ear from whenever you watch this until kickoff on Sunday. Actually, to the fourth quarter on Sunday, because you mentioned health problems for the Bills. Um, look, the, the defensive backfield, particularly at cornerback, um, is an issue among many issues for the Ravens defense. It's funny through the franchise's history here in Baltimore, when you think Ravens, the first thing that pops in your mind is what defense. Absolutely. That has gone completely flipped over the, since Lamar has entered the equation specifically since 2019, their, their defense specifically their past defense and the pass, the lack of a pass rush over the last few years has really hurt this as well. But they're last in the league in pass defense. They get burned all the time, and and it's and it's weird because they have Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters. Now, Humphrey and Peters ended last year injured in that Miami game. Marlon Humphrey was not on the field a lot in the second half and fourth quarter, and Marcus Peters it was his first game since last year. Uh, Since two years ago, actually, because he missed all of last year. So he's working his way back in. So when they're in the fourth quarter and relying on a couple of rookies at corner in Pepe Williams and Jalen Armour Davis, who just got torched over and over again. um, And then they're they're relying on Kyle Hamilton, first round safety in the backfield, who has all the talent in the world. But miscommunication and mental errors all over the place in that fourth quarter. 
chunk plays, big plays. Not a lot of teams, or maybe no team has the speed at wide receiver and the athletes at wide receiver like the Dolphins do. And, and they just got burned. Some of it's on the offense. They didn't score. I mean, they got outscored 28 to three. And those four touchdowns by the Dolphins, there, there weren't any special teams touchdowns. <laughs> there weren't any rushing touchdowns. They were passing touchdowns. Uh, there weren't any interceptions. They were they were passing touchdowns on the Ravens. So I mean, <laughs> Bills fans have to be, um, you know, super excited, super geeked for what they're what, what they're going to find in, in the Ravens defense coming up here on Sunday. Yeah, um, the Bills had you know there there were so many issues in the game with the Dolphins because of the heat that added to it. They came in banged up, and you've probably seen you know. Micah Hyde's out for the year. Jordan Poyer was out. They were missing. Obviously, Trey White's still not back yet. And then they lost um, their uh, one of their rookie corners. And so Kair Elam, the number one pick, is is a, obviously a starter now. They're they're out there searching for another corner. So they've been in that spot, and they've been so steady with the secondary. But the Bills still find a way, even against the Dolphins. I mean, they rarely let anything get over their head, and they they only had one big play. And it was was a big one for the Dolphins. So the Bills, no matter what, Sean McDermott and company, and, and you know Leslie Frazier, they know how to, you know, coach these guys up with with that is the case. But the thing where you've got with the Bills is, I mean, Allen can make you pay in so many different ways. So I think the Bills come into this game with a beaten up defense, but thinking we can make big plays against this Ravens defense. And based on what you're saying is the Ravens may feel that way too. Absolutely. Uh, they're really going to have to come up with various ways to, to, you know, guard against the, the both the air and the run. And, and they know it, they know it for sure. Um, and, and we're going to, you know, hear probably hear them talk at length about Josh Allen and all those weapons and Stefan Diggs all week long. And, you know, I mentioned the pass rush. They, they, they can't get to the quarterback. That was yeah. another thing. You know, we mentioned wide receiver. They entered the year not really putting all their eggs in, in that the basket of Bateman and Duvernay. And so far, that has worked out. That's the good. The bad is the pass rush. They entered the year with basically two healthy pass rushers, you know, outside linebackers in, in um, Adafi Owe and Justin Houston. Justin Houston – just got hurt. Um, a bunch of injuries they're dealing with now, um, including defensive tackle Michael Pierce. W remains to be seen what his injury is. Um, he has an arm injury. Justin Houston has a groin. We'll see how that plays out. But Adafi Owe, his second year, expecting big things. Um, he's been invisible. Yeah. Uh, no one knows you know, where Adafi Owe. Maybe he changed his name back to Jason Owe how we went in, in, in Penn state, but he hasn't showed up yet. And, you know, they really have issues getting to the quarterback. They're still waiting on Tyus Bowser who tours Achilles in the season finale last year. And they drafted David Ajobo from uh, Michigan. And, you know, he has an Achilles. He's working his way back from his Achilles. He tore on his pro day. So that should help later on in the year if he comes back and Bowser's going to come back, but, but they can't get to the quarterback. They get no push. And that's, that, that is going to, that's going to hurt. You can't let Josh just sit back there, ho hum, look for his weapons, and then boom, take off or or you know hit Stefan Diggs for multiple touchdowns again. Yeah, um, you mentioned Allen, uh, you know, obviously a few times. Uh, I'm always curious at the perception of players, and for a few years it was like, oh yeah, they've got that kid, Josh Allen. He could throw the ball a mile and whatever it is, and now he's a superstar in this league. So. Fans this week in Baltimore, um, I mean, Josh Allen just appears to be one of those guys, kind of like Lamar. He has fans everywhere. People love the way guys like that play. Um, with a, a, a Raven fan who who's obviously looking for his team to win this week, what's the perception of Allen from a team? They've seen him in the playoffs, obviously, a few years, a couple of years ago. But what do you think the perception of Josh Allen now is from a Baltimore perspective? I mean, perfect quarterback. I, I don't, I mean, he's, he's, what else do you want in a quarterback nowadays? Right. I mean, the, the, the one thing I'll say from me is uh, 
I guess the only thing could change is not taking as many hits in yeah. bounds, right? I mean, maybe, but that's that's what makes Josh Allen Josh Allen, right? So so how do you you just got to turn him loose and let him play and trust that he knows what he's doing? Um, yeah. And th- that's one thing about Lamar, not not to get away from the Allen thing, but but that one one perception of Lamar is that he's a running quarterback and he's going to put himself in 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 these uh, precarious situations where he can get hurt. And that's maybe not why you want to pay him, yada, yada, yada. But when you look at his injury history, it, it's all been in the pocket or, or, yeah. you know, when, when the, when the line breaks down or, you know, he does a good job of either getting down or getting out of bounds. So, you know, you know, with Allen, you know, back to your question, um, how can you not be just terrified of what, what he can do to you every, <laughs> every week? I mean, unless yeah. you can get to him, and get him on the ground. Yeah. You know, he, he's, he has to be as close to a perfect quarterback as, and, and he's young. That's the thing. He's so young. Um, so I think people are apprehensive and anxious of what he's going to do to the AFC over his career. Yeah. Uh, I, I love this. Like I said, right in the beginning, I love this matchup with these two guys who just put everything out there. Um, you know, there's, there's so many quality quarterbacks in the NFL and they're all different, but I think these two guys have, A lot of similarities. And the one thing I was wondering about, he said he doesn't have an agent. I guess Josh Allen now is going to have, he's got a few national commercials coming out, which I was kind of wondering about. I I really enjoy seeing the glimpses we get of Lamar's personality. He seems like a upbeat guy, likable guy. He's got the incredible athletic ability that goes with it. Why why are we not seeing Lamar somewhere? I mean, you know, we've seen Baker Mayfield forever. You know, you see a lot of, you see Dak all over the place. Is it because he doesn't have an agent? Am I missing something where I don't see Lamar and I think he would, I think you can make him that guy and become even a bigger star. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, You know, I think he's in a DraftKings commercial uh, with with a couple other guys, but that off the top of my head, I think that's it. He's not even featured really locally. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, he's not doing West Her commercials. He's not yes. doing, you know, or the West Her of Baltimore, right? I mean, he's right. not doing, um, you know, things that that even locally, that local companies try to to get guys to do. You know, where you can see him is on social media, on Twitter and Instagram. He, yeah, when he has something to say, he says it there. He did yeah. in training camp, um, a lot. Yeah, you know, so that's kind of where he shows up and, but, but you know, how do you, you can make money that way, but you know, I don't think really he is. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you real quick coaching staff for Baltimore. Uh, We know our old friend from Buffalo a couple of years here, Greg Roman runs the offense seems to be the right guy for Lamar. I mean, Lamar has been an MVP and been that guy, John Harbaugh, uh, connections with Sean McDermott. Obviously, they used to coach together in Philly. He's he's that guy. Like, he's the Ravens. Like, you think of Lamar, but you certainly, for years, we've thought of Harbaugh. He appeared to go through a bit of a rough patch for a few years where people were starting to be like, you know, so, sort of like Mike Tomlin sees in Pittsburgh, where it's like, hey, is he not getting it done? What's the perception of Harbaugh? If, are people still all in on him? Is there doubts about Harbaugh how does it work in Baltimore well last week after the meltdown against Miami if you turned on sports radio in Baltimore (laughs) at any point of the day uh, on Monday um, I would probably venture a guess that 90 percent of the people wanted Harbaugh out like by the end of the day game two of a season Um, you know maybe Ravens fans are a little spoiled. I mean, there hasn't look, they've been there's been so much stability at coaching. Last year was the first time that John Harbaugh had ever finished in last place. Um, and you know, the way that the season ended last year, there there were like close game after close game after close game. And you know, it could have gone either way. What how John Harbaugh has changed over the years, he's super uber aggressive now, and it bit him last week against Miami. Um, you know, la- last year he he goes for two point conversions and they don't work. And if those two point conversions work, they win games and they're in the playoffs. It, it, so it bit him last year too. Um, John Harbaugh used to be 
um, really an authoritarian, um, his way or the highway. He is all players coach, I, I think, now. He, he's really more of a players coach, I should say, now. And he really respects what the guys do. He respects the different personalities and what they bring to the table. And he asks players' opinion during the week, obviously, and during the game as well. We've seen snippets of that. Um, you know, throughout the years recently, specifically with Lamar, what do you want to do? You want to go for it? Two point yeah. conversion, fourth down. What are you thinking? Um, so yeah, you know, you, Lamar, um, Lamar, Harbaugh. Um, look, I mean, he he knows what he's doing, obviously, and he has the track record, and um, you really can't argue with with his results. Super Bowl winning quarterback, you know, playoffs after playoffs. Um, so you know, I don't think there's really any fervor of a real um, fire Harbaugh movement. There are yeah. certainly plenty of people out there, but I think people are are pretty satisfied with the coaching staff right now, in my opinion. Yeah, as, as some of what you described fits Sean McDermott too. Um, you know, after the meltdown, the 13 seconds last year, and they made multiple mistakes when they could have beaten, should have beaten Kansas City. A lot of pressure. And I think there's pressure on McDermott. They've lost now six consecutive close games. Their last 20 wins have all been by double digits or more. But the close games they've lost, and that usually falls to the coaching staff. But your point about adjusting, using analytics, becoming more aggressive, talking to the players about practice schedules, what they want to do, understanding personalities. You know, for guys like this, I don't think that's an easy transition, you know, and and they've both done it in different ways. McDermott doesn't have the resume, but they've both learned to adjust. You know, it, it's it's a great point. And, you know, we we started by I was talking about training camp and, and Lamar and, um, you know, after last year, last year for the Ravens was defined by by injuries and they suffered multiple season ending injuries to key players in training camp that were, you know, that people that were, you know, Dobbins was lost for the season. Peters was lost for the season. Gus Edwards is still not back. He was lost for the season. He's the number two running back lost for the season. Justice Hill running back who you're going to see a lot of on Sunday, who had a, a great game, the best game of his career against um, the Patriots uh, last Sunday. He, he was lost for the season. Um, you know, multiple guys mo lost for the season. They changed their whole training camp practice schedule around that, around trying to minimize injuries in the pre in the preseason in, in, in training camp and games. They went from practicing early morning uh, before the heat comes to practicing in the middle of the heat, 130 to four. Believe me, 130 to four in Maryland um, mm. it is not a walk in the park. Uh, you know, I can tell you from from the, from standing on the sidelines in the beating sun for the guys that wasn't either. But what John Harbaugh told us was that they through their research uh, that they found that, you know, among other things, it gives the guys time to wake up in the morning. They, they're getting um, some some exercise in and, and some lifting and some cardio, a little bit of cardio in the morning. They wake up, they fuel up, they get some meals in them. Then they take the field. They didn't suffer really compared to last year, relatively speaking, yeah. really a lot of catastrophic injuries in, in the preseason. He changed, right? I mean, he's been doing something for so long his way. He changes it up. Now they're suffering injuries, which is kind of a conundrum in and of itself in, in the regular season. But, you know, that, to your point of these longtime hard-headed coaches maybe not wanting to change – Harbaugh, he will change. I mean, I talked I talked about how he's more of a players coach now. He changes in that regard. And he, you know, it, it on the field, and the practice schedules recently as a few months ago and last month, really, he changed that way as well. Yeah. All right. Last couple of things involved the fans coming in. You know, Bill's Mafia likes to travel. We just saw him in Miami. We were out in LA. Bill's fans going. Baltimore is a, a nice trip. It's not a long trip. You can get a direct flight, all those things. First, let's start with the weather. Now, we have had the two hottest games I have ever covered for the Bills have been the first two this year. It was 97 in L.A., even though that's a stadium. That field was a sauna because it's 
covered, but it's not indoors. And then this past week was ridiculous. I mean, all the players dropping due to the heat. Then I look at Baltimore. I'm like, oh, this will be great. Fall in Baltimore. And I'm seeing rain. Yeah. I don't know if you've looked. Are we getting rain? I just looked at are it. We... That's what I was doing. Looking at it yeah. right here. Rain. Is yeah. that what it's supposed to be? Is that what you're hearing? Yeah, Is that rain. what Channel 2 um, meteorologists are telling? You know they're always absolutely. right. Absolutely. It's going to come in from the uh, their cold front mixed with a <laughs> circular pattern. No, I, I think it's – I actually – I could be wrong, but I think it's the remnants of the hurricane that that's – that's coming up the West yeah. coast of Florida. It's going to move in and up. So yeah, we might be in. And I, I, I think um, when I could be wrong, but I think when the bills came to Baltimore, I want to say it was the 2016 season. Uh, I think it was my, my first regular season game. The bills opened. I think right. that was the, I think that was the Nathan Peterman. Oh yeah. 44 to six. And then yes. Josh came in in 2018. Yes. 18. That was the that was when Peterman if it, Peterman started lasted a half. I think it was 30 to nothing, something like that. Was That's, that was and, that the season opener? The the Bills at that Bill was Raven? the season opener, and Josh came in in the second half. Yeah, and he started since then. So yeah. absolutely, yeah. Okay. So so we might be look, getting look, that. When Bills Mafia and you know when the Bills come down to Baltimore, expect expect weather, expect yeah. some precip. So yeah. who's um, that favor? I don't know. I mean, the wind. I'll tell you, the wind. Um, they they changed a few years ago. They changed M and T Bank Stadium. They put where there were like little notches on the corners um, yeah. between the between the seats. They put ver uh, vertical video boards. It kind of changed the wind pattern. Hmm. There's not as much wind now, uh, nothing like Orchard Park. So, uh, you know, what should it do to the to the game? I don't know. I mean, I think both these guys can operate just yeah. fine in, with in the weather. weather. Yeah. Um, seats are still purple, right? I mean, it's still right. I mean, it's fully, for people that fully. haven't been there. It's what I I really like the stadium. I've always liked it going there. I think it's a cool place, great atmosphere. So, for fans who haven't been there. Um, it, it really is. It's a home field advantage for the Ravens. Absolutely. Um, all purple for eighties kids. Uh, think about grimace from McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, all, all purple and it's, it's a great, it's a great stadium. I mean, built in the mid nineties and, um, they, they've really enjoyed a lot of success there and, you know, Ravens fans are loud and they're rowdy. They're not jumping through tables, um, but they're um, they're jumping all over the opposition when, when they have yeah. the ball. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a fun time, and there's plenty do, to do in Baltimore. And well, there's yeah. an anchor bar in Frederick, Maryland, which is, I want to say, from downtown Baltimore, probably 30 to 40 to 45, depending on traffic, drive west. So, and you'll pass it actually, if you're, if you're driving, oh, yeah. there's a way, if you're driving from, from Buffalo to Baltimore, you can pass the anchor bar. I've been there and it's an, it's an anchor bar, all Buffalo yeah. stuff. So you can even pick up some wings on the way and heat them up, get them ready for the game. Um, that the last question was about food. So if they haven't been, everybody wants to go to the waterfront, right? Everybody who's down, right. And when I think Baltimore, like people think wings, I think. Crab cakes. Am yeah. I right? Is that number one? And if yeah. not crab cakes, what else in, in Maryland? Okay, in so the, there's a thing. First of all, um, pe people know here, people know I, I, I lived in Buffalo for, for eight and a half years. I, I'm well versed in, in the wing territories. And, you know, they, so people when they're, when they're traveling up there, uh, they always ask me, like, should we get the wings? Are they really that better? And I'm like, yes, they're, they're, <laughs> Like legitimately, that's not a stereotype. It's like they're they're better, right? Um, so, and when people ask about you know crabs and crab cakes in Baltimore and and this area, it's like are they really that? But yes, they're better. There's less filler. There's better crab. There's more crab, right? That people know how to make them because they're competing with each other. They they so get the crab cakes. Um, there's also a thing called pit beef, right? It's okay. kind of like a beef on weck, no come a weck roll, but and and the beef is a little more charred in in like a pit. Think of like a pit wing, 
like a pit okay. barbecue wing, transition that into kind of like a roast beef type thing. Very good. And they also have pit turkey if you're into the poultry. Yeah. Wow. So the seafood or the meat, whatever you want. Surf and, and turf, uh, baby. Surf and turf and ready for Baltimore. All right. Well, we're looking forward to it. Uh, we're coming down. We'll be down there, and we certainly will be uh, sampling what Baltimore has to offer and looking forward to going to that great statement, great atmosphere, and seeing these two great quarterbacks go head-to-head. All right, I always say to everybody, people know you're Western New Yorker. If they're not following you or weren't from before, where can they follow you on social media so they can get all the Ravens' information? Yeah, head to Twitter, at Stepner, W-M-A-R, S-T-E-P-N-E-R, at W. M A R. Awesome. Great stuff from a guy who knows Western New York and knows the Baltimore area, knows the Baltimore Ravens, Sean Stepner, Channel 2 WMAR. Thanks for being with us on Buffalo Plus. And for all of you, thanks for being with us. Again, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you the next time on the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel.